I am not a very good saver. I'm a bit more of a spender and I spend money on food. I just think the $10 delivery fee from DoorDash is totally fair. No problem, happy to, happy to pay it. It brings so much value to my life to just have food magically appear at my doorstep. I would do anything to keep that happening. Not any, not any, I wouldn't do anything, but God, I love it. Hi, I'm Lacey J. I'm an entrepreneur who started a social media agency at age 22. Weird, I know. I've been niching it down and building it up over the last 11 years and a long 11 years they have been. Being on social media so much is hard on my and my team's mental health, so we work to find routines, balance, and focus on ethics that keep us showing up authentically online. If you manage social media accounts and you feel confused, unfocused, or straight up wackadoo, welcome to the club. We meet here once a week. Welcome back, everybody. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, let's get into today. What is working on social media right now? And I know a lot of times that I have multiple points about what's working, but today I want to focus on one overarching theme, which is video content. Okay, so we're going to go into a few different angles and perspectives with this. But the major thing I want to talk about what's working on social media right now, video content. Whew. It's tough for some of us who have run social media campaigns and social media pages for a decade or more. And we got a real good system going for a while where we had photos and, and still images and graphics that we could use and that could be all our, all our social media content, no problem. But now with the introduction and importance of video content, we're having to totally rethink and rework our, our processes in a way that could include more video content. It has to, like we don't have a choice anymore as social media managers to stick only in this realm of photo and graphics. We've gotta start getting consistent video content into our workflow. Um, it's, it's the future of social media right now. You can see it with Instagram Reels, you can see it with TikTok. Um, so let's, let's talk about it a bit, shall we? The first thing I wanna talk about is how can we be the most efficient and effective with our video content? One way that we have found to do that is by starting with long form content creation. Okay, so that might look to you like hosting a podcast. Maybe you've got some sort of uh, podcast that you include a, vid a video element of. That can often get you, you know, 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes of video content that can then be pared down and repurposed into lots of social media posts. Now, it doesn't have to be a fancy setup in a studio where you've got multiple cameras and uh, an editor who's doing all that work for you. It doesn't have to be like that. It could be as simple as doing a Zoom interview once a week and recording that Zoom video and then working off of that piece of content. So start thinking about how can you get into your consistent workflow, getting yourself or whoever the client is on camera more often. Can you schedule a monthly Zoom interview that they're going to do that will end up giving you 60 minutes of content that you can pare down into what? It doesn't have to be that much. You could pare it down into three minutes of usable content, okay? One of the things that we've been doing with some of our current clients is in the past, um, they have held webinars, right? So webinars is a great way for people to get um, people into their sales funnel, at the top of their sales funnel. So what we've been doing is requesting the old video content from webinars. So it doesn't even have to be stuff that's being done right now. What video content exists already that you could pare down into little quotables that could go onto social media? Um, B-roll is another good way to do this. You, you just gotta get in the habit or get your clients in the habit of taking just a little bit of video. It could be you walking into the front of your office. It could be you saying hi to the person that you're about to have coffee with. It could be, you know, you're going to take a selfie with, with whoever you're having coffee with, but instead of a selfie, you take maybe a 10 second video of you two. Start thinking in video. What are the little pieces of B-roll that you can get throughout your work life that could be used in Instagram Reels, could be used in Instagram and TikTok stories, in YouTube shorts, in TikTok videos? Start thinking in video. Okay, also user-generated content. Depending on your industry and your, your brand, the way that your brand presents to people, user-generated content might actually end up being a, a better way for you to get video. 
We've talked before um, on the episode about One Million Organic Reach with Adrian about how a lot of their strategy is around user-generated content. So if you're going to have a strategy like that, what does it look like? You have to be able to have a workflow that one, you can identify videos online that are already posted that include your brand's content. So for instance, we have um, a premium weightlifting company that we work with and the person who owns that business and runs their social media accounts is on Instagram every day. They are finding new people to follow within their niche, people who have Um, really high quality home gyms, people that are personal trainers, people that train professional athletes. They are constantly looking for who their target demographic is and following them. They also have a really good workflow of um, when somebody purchases from them, they find out what their social media handles are. So they start that conversation during the sales process so that they can connect with them on social media so that they can promote the concept of the customer putting content on social. Now, as soon as you've found a piece of content on social media that includes your brand or your products, you actually could do some legwork then of messaging that person, asking them for that video, asking if you can use it in your content and tag them. I have found that when we do that practice, nine times out of 10 people say yes. If you try to do it on your own without asking, people will get upset. But if you do the legwork of making a connection with the person that posted the content, asking for the video content, having a nice way to explain how they can properly send the video content, you're going to start creating a stockpile of user-generated content that you can pull from at any time. But you have to keep track of who that came from, if you have approval to use it, who you need to tag with it. But that's another way to give you a whole nother uh, stream of video content that you can use in your marketing. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about logistics then around video content. So here's kind of a process of how we do it here at Spry, at least within our brand. We record the podcast, we record interviews, we we record B-roll content, okay? At that point, um, we then have an editor, shout out to Chad. Woohoo! (laughs) (laughs) I was hoping for something like that. Who can take the raw video content and edit it down into a long form video. Now, most of the time that long form video goes on to YouTube, okay? YouTube is the space that you can host your longer form video content. Let's talk about the repurposing process, okay? I'm gonna go a little bit step by step of how we actually take this longer form content and repurpose it into social media content. So, step by step. You have to have some sort of file management system that you can access from your desktop and from your phone. We use Google Drive. And so all of the finished long form content needs to live in one of those file management systems like Google Drive. Then you also need to have an app, that app on your phone so that you can download the full video file onto your phone. You can imagine that means that you need to make sure that you have a lot of storage space on your phone if you're going to be doing something like this, a lot of cloud storage space that you uh, pay for. I personally pay for a terabyte of cloud storage space for um, my phone, and I I have not come close to hitting that, um, but we'll see how many years it'll take me to need to buy more. Okay, so once you've got the long form video down onto your phone, then you need to use some sort of editing app to just get it down into the smaller packages, okay? So I use an app called CapCut, and technically it has like a lot of the TikTok editing tools just in a separate app. And the idea is maybe you've got, you know, a 20 minute long video and you want to create maybe three or four one minute packages or so from that piece of content. Depends on the platform, how long you're gonna go for, but I'll just use this as an example for now. So let's say, for instance, you talk for about three minutes about a specific topic that the people in your social media community would really benefit uh, hearing about. You want to take that three minute video and you want to cut out all the filler pieces that you use to formulate the best uh, communication that you did during the long form content and bring it down into a punchy piece that's going to keep people's attention. Uh, On Instagram, we're still looking at about a minute, under a minute of content or so. You can create videos that are longer than that, but when it comes to Instagram specifically, 
60 seconds is a really good amount to shoot for uh, to get the reach and engagement that you're looking for. On TikTok, longer form videos and longer form on TikTok means like up to three minutes are becoming more and more popular. Um, whereas on Instagram, we've got these nice little 60 second pieces that are high quality, high value pieces. And then you can also do, you know, like an under seven second that's more like the B roll that's going along with a trending audio. OK, so keep that in mind when you're thinking about what kind of videos you're paring down and posting and where. Let's see. So you've got your piece of video content in CapCut and you're cutting out any of the pieces that are. Uh, maybe redundant or don't add to the punchiness of the value of a piece of content that's going to go onto those platforms. Now you need to add some sort of captions, okay? You can choose to add those captions in an editing software like CapCut, or you can choose to add those captions later on the platform when you're publishing them. Now, I have never seen a difference between the amount of reach and engagement that you get on a piece of content, whether you choose to do the captions in the editing phase or during the, the posting phase on the platform. I haven't seen a difference. I could see it being possible that there would be a difference because what is coming through the platform, number one, they always wanna promote you using their features. And number two, it's a bit more readable to the platform versus a flattened piece of video that just has words added to it. That's not quite as readable to the search engine of the uh, platform than a caption that was added after. Okay. So you've got to get some captions added. Um, when you upload it into the platform, that's the best place to add music, okay? If you choose to add music in your editing platforms, you're missing out on this variable of the algorithm that is that audio is part of what makes a piece of content searchable and show up more often. Um, so I would not add any music to any videos in editing phase. I would always add the music on the platform so that you can take advantage of that audio being an algorithmic factor for your content. Okay, let's see what else is on my notes here. So let's say you have these, these little packages and you start uploading them into um, the platforms. Let's talk about dimensions for just a second. On TikTok and on Instagram, nine by 16, is the best uh, ratio, it's the best resolution for you, it's the best size for your video, for Instagram and for TikTok. Now, for YouTube, it's more like 16 by nine. We tried something recently when we did four by three, which four by three is a great size for Facebook and for LinkedIn. When we did it on YouTube though, when you watched the piece of content on a phone or on a computer, it looked fine, but when you actually pulled it up onto a larger size screen, like a television screen, it was stretching that four by three video to fit into a 16 by nine. So that sucks. Uh, so maybe YouTube, as long as it's a full YouTube video, can be the 16 by nine. Um, the only time where maybe you wouldn't do that is if you're doing a YouTube short. So basically anything that's coming under 60 seconds is like automatically being considered a YouTube short. And that presents in the, in the nine by 16, the same way that it does on Instagram and TikTok. So um, interesting there. Now for LinkedIn video and for Facebook video, one to one, four by three or 16 by nine works really well for those two platforms. You certainly can post things in nine by 16 on those two platforms, but it doesn't fit the feed as well and it's not as commonly used on those two platforms. So maybe we're sticking to nine by 16 on TikTok and, and Instagram. Maybe we're sticking to 16 by nine on YouTube. Maybe we're sticking to one to one or four to three, maybe 16 by nine on Facebook and LinkedIn as well, okay? Let's talk about what happens when you post the content, okay? So on both Instagram and TikTok, the pattern that most of us creators are seeing is that you upload a piece of content and the vast majority of the reach and engagement comes within the first two hours, okay? It's like the algorithm picks up that you've posted a piece of content, it shoots it out, it starts testing it, and then it brings it back down again. So the people who are gonna be engaging with your content, your video content on TikTok and Instagram 
after that two hour bump is usually the people who are already your followers, who are already in your social commu media community. They're gonna see your content anyway. But the people who haven't seen you before or are not followers, that bump always happens within the first two hours. If anybody argues with me and tells me that's different, I would love to see because that's the only data that I've seen and the creators that I talk to have seen is that there's this huge bump within two hours of your video posting and then it plateaus and the only things that trickle in after that are the people who are already your followers already within your community. The platform where there is, that is not the same is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a platform where I've consistently seen engagement and reach trickle day after day after day, even a week later, content is still organically getting more reach and engagement on LinkedIn. On Facebook, you're not going to reach anybody unless you pay for it anyway. So good luck trying anything different than that. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk ar about around video is Instagram has recently merged the idea of reels and video posts. So reels and video posts used to be different products, if you will. They used to be different things. And now they've made them one thing. And like, I don't get it yet. <laughs> I don't know if you get it yet at Spry. We are still in the learning phase of what that means for the platform. Because in the past, Instagram Reels sometimes could be promoted on some spaces and most of the time could not be promoted, while video posts under a minute long could be promoted easily with ads. But now that they've merged it into one, we can't quite figure out yet what that means for us in the long term. Does that mean that we're gonna be able to promote content that's still under one minute? Does it not mean that? Where? Because every time, I don't know about you, but if you've tried to promote Reels inside of the Instagram app lately, the promotion button is there but every time you go to promote it, a little thing pops up, a little dialog box pops up that says, you cannot promote this reel because it was also shared to Facebook. But it wasn't shared to Facebook. So I, I tried toggling off the option of um, allow this post to also be seen on Facebook. And I was like, oh, that's going to fix it. That's obviously going to fix it. It didn't fix it. So even if you're only posting it to Instagram and you've toggled off the option that says allow it to post to Facebook too, or allow it to be viewed on Facebook too, it still hasn't changed that dialogue box happening. So this process of Instagram merging reels and video posts is going to be a huge learning experience for us at Spry and I'm sure for all of you who are managing any sort of social media accounts. So let's learn together. Once we start coming up with some insights from the work that we're doing on it, we will share here with you. And if you have some insights, we would love to hear about that in our Facebook group, Spry Space, um, or our Discord channel that's gonna be opening up soon. So if that's more of your cup of tea, I'll let you know more as soon as it, as it opens up. Hey, if you're looking for ways to build your foundational social media strategy skills, we've got a course for that. I worked with Adrian Harvey, who's the lead digital strategist at Spry, has a master's in digital media, and has worked in digital marketing for over 10 years to create this course. The course is called Social Media on Purpose, and it takes all of the lessons we've learned over our combined 24 years in the industry and distills them down into bite-sized lessons for you to enjoy. If you're interested, check it out at thinkspry.com courses. Also, we're uh, kind of cute and, and funny if, if that's important to you. Okay, so before I let you off for the week and you head out to do all your social media content, my one thing I'll leave you with this week is to move your friggin' body, okay? Us social media managers, we just like sit here with our phone and like our, our, our jaw is all clenched and our shoulders are up at our ears and our back is hunched and we're so frustrated because the story sticker all of a sudden went behind the last layer and I forgot to edit this and now I can't edit my post properly and there's just so many things that cause us frustration. And we're just so closed in our body so often and most of the time we're highly caffeinated and we need to move our bodies a little bit more. I'm just gonna say it, okay? So maybe that means you're gonna stretch for 10 minutes today and then you're gonna post about it on social media so that people can clap for you because that dopamine hit helps you to build a pattern around it, okay? 
Maybe you're going to go for a walk with your dog. Maybe this time when you throw the ball for your dog, you're not going to sit on your phone the whole time. You're going to you're going to walk while you throw the ball for your dog. Um, whatever you do, just just move your body a little bit more. It's it's you you function because of it and it deserves a little bit of your attention too you will be better at your life you will be better at your job you will be better at everything if you give your body a little bit more movement okay good luck i'll see you next week talk to you later bye social media with lacey j is brought to you by spry social media marketing edited and produced by chad hinman and executive produced by lacey j fought